Hey young scientists, it's Melissa here again from Lowell Observatory. Today we're going to explore Newton's third law of motion. And then on top of that, we're going to chart our part four and do our rocket ship. So here we go. Are you excited? Paddle? All right, let's get to it. It means for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction that acts with the same momentum and the opposite velocity. So let's see this in action using a demonstration. I've got string, a straw, a balloon, and tape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to string this across using the backs of two chairs. And before I tie it off, I'm going to actually open up this straw and put the string through it. And this might take me a second. Perfect. Now I'm going to tie this end of the string to my chair with my straw still attached. I'm going to just tie it to the other end. Looks good. Now here's my straw. I'm going to blow this balloon up just a little bit. I'm going to have my tape ready. Now I'm going to tape my balloon while holding it taut. My straw. Now I'm ready for action. So first we're going to talk about what's going on. My balloon is elastic. It's got air inside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let go of the end of the balloon and let the air escape. That air is going to force the balloon forward as the air pushes itself out this direction. So an action and a reaction in terms of forces. Let's see. I'll slow that down so you can see that in slow motion. Another example are rockets, which we're going to explore today. So rockets move forward by the gas expelling at a high velocity. This means as the rocket exerts a large backward force on the gas in the rocket's combustion chamber, it's going to react with the uh, rocket pushing forward. So now that we kind of understand Newton's third law of motion, it's time to pull out your flip chart. And here you're going to now write your third law and write down for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction that acts with the same momentum and opposite velocity. Then you're going to draw your face, your best interpretation of this law. I put myself in a boat, and I'm jumping off. And what you're going to do with this now is you're going to review the first, second, and third laws. And by doing this, you're going to actually use the back to draw your Newton rocket um, design. So on your design, you want to answer a few questions. You want to figure out what kind of material is your rocket going to be made out of? Which one has the less amount of friction? You're going to eventually figure out how much your uh, rocket's going to weigh. So write down the mass of your rocket. And then you want to figure out, well, how are you going to cause a action and a reaction? And I wrote down that I'm going to be using baking soda and vinegar for my rocket ship. What I want you all to do at home now is design your rocket ship around the three laws of motion. Once you have your design, you can make your prototype. I've linked in our lesson plan some of NASA's uh, steps on how to create a rocket ship using a pump, using foam, baking soda and vinegar, Alka-Seltzer, um, all of those fun things. So once you're done creating your rocket, we'd love to see your rocket's designs. And we'd love to see your rocket blast off. Okay, scientists, a couple things I need to review. 
if your rocket ship is going to be dangerous, meaning you might be mixing vinegar and baking soda together, or you might think it might be blasting up really far, make sure you go outside for this. Make sure you have an adult supervising and saying that all of your experiments are A-OK -okay to do and that you have the proper safety equipment. I'll see you outside. Okay, scientists, I've got almost ready to go. One of container full of vinegar and a cap made of a water and baking soda sludge. We're gonna set it up. What are you guys doing? Thank you all for joining me for Newton's Laws of Motion and the Science Challenge. I've had a blast, and I'll see you next week.